So one thing I forgot to mention earlier, and I want to start off with this real quick, both for the confirmands and for everyone else. Um, I think three confirmations ago, this banner was created specifically for our confirmation classes. And uh, Mary Persley made this for us. And I love the extended hands, um, the, the hands of our kids reaching up to the Holy Spirit, reaching up to God. Um, and you'll notice on different hands, uh, right around the wrist is a nameplate. Uh, so confirmands, don't forget to get your nameplate. Um, and that was made for you by Miss Beth Waltrip. So just remember that. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this morning. And Lord, I ask that either because of me or in spite of me that you bring a message to your people this day. I ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, so as I said earlier, this morning is a celebration of Pentecost. Last week we talked about Ascension Sunday, the time of celebrating the Ascension of Christ. But there was that time, they, you know, they're with Jesus after resurrection, walking with him, rediscovering all about who Christ was. And Christ reminding them that I am with you always, not even death will separate me from you. And pumping them up and getting them energized for their journey. Because that whole process from the Last Supper through that time of Jesus with them was their confirmation service. Does that make sense? They were walking with him. They were being reminded. They were being fueled up. They were being pumped up. And they were being energized to begin their journey of leadership in the faith, which was pretty incredible. But once again, they're watching Jesus rise and go off and be distant with two promises. One that Jesus said, I will always be with you in the Great Commission. And the other promise is to send the power of the Holy Spirit. It's on this morning during Pentecost that we celebrate that coming of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in the tongues of fire coming first to the disciples in that room and touching each and every one of them. That's why we wear the red. And we know that in the course of this service, the Holy Spirit is present and will be present and will be touching each of the confirmands. And guess what? When the Holy Spirit shows up, it doesn't discriminate. So you might get touched too. Just know that's okay. And the Holy Spirit will touch and energize and pump up and fuel each of them. See, at Pentecost, when it did that for them, Peter went out with the other disciples and they started to talk to the folks. Because what's the first thing that everyone thought when they started hearing everyone speaking in different languages than their own? They're drunk, right? So what was the first thing Peter did? Oh, they're not drunk. It's too early in the morning for that. Thought that was funny. Uh, but, you know, it's too early, maybe later in the afternoon, but not right now. Um, but no, he said it's too early in the morning for that. It's not because of that. And he began to preach and he began to share. And the amazing thing with that is from them being blessed and touched that day, Scripture says that about 3,000 people were added to their numbers. 3,000 people because someone came out excited to share what God had to say. Someone allowed the Holy Spirit to touch them and move them and embolden them to go out and share. And it wasn't as much what Peter was doing other than Peter just being faithful to share what God was asking him to say by allowing himself to be moved by the Spirit to go out and share the love of God with everyone that was gathered. It's pretty special stuff. When it comes to being a disciple, that's the primary thing that we're asked to do. To love God, to know that lo God loves us, and to be able to share that love of God with others. That's Pentecost. That's the birth of the church. When we continue that each and every year, when we continue that each and every day, when we live into being the disciples that God has called us to be, the church is reborn every single time we share God with others. 
I love this time of year. I love every confirmation class that we ever have. I love every confirmation celebration because it's evidence, once again, of us doing it well and doing it right by making disciples for Jesus Christ, giving them the tools that they need, giving them people that they need, giving them community that they need to go and live out their faith. Thank you for being a part of it. You're all here as witnesses, but you're also here as participants in who they are and what they're doing. There's a couple stories I heard this year at annual conference, and I wanted to be able to share them with you because I think it ties in to who God is on this day, but also it calls to us about who we can be, not just during a confirmation process, but all the time, every day every Sunday. The first one had to do with a young man who grew up with his family in uh, war-torn Bosnia. And they finally uh, were able to get their family out and they came to the United States and he got involved in school. And opportunities that he didn't have as a young Jewish boy in Bosnia, all of a sudden opportunities were made available to him here that he didn't have before. He excelled in school. He did incredibly well. Still got picked on a little bit for his accent and everything else, but it didn't stop him from living into uh, the dream that his whole family had for him. And he went through school and he continued to excel and he continued to succeed very well. And then came his graduation Sunday. Oh, I'm sorry, graduation day. It's confirmation Sunday. This was his graduation day, and we're in the season of graduation uh, right now, so that's what really touched me with this. But when his name was called and they listed the honors of all this young man had achieved, an older gentleman from the balcony got up, and he went to the balcony over top, and he just stood there like this. And he had long white hair, a long white beard, yarmulke on his head. It was the boy's grandfather. And he stood there for what the witnesses said was an awkward, awkwardly long time. But he just stood there, not saying a word, but extending his hands over. Celebrating his grandson. Casting his shadow out over that graduation ceremony, extending his blessing to the grandson. And it was obvious to everybody there that it wasn't the first time he had done that. It wasn't the first time he had done that for his grandson, praying for him, extending his spirit over him. When I heard that story, I thought about God at Pentecost in heaven with his hands raised up, extended over all the people, extending his shadow, extending his blessing over all that were gathered. I also thought of the opportunity each and every one of us has to be able to raise our hands up and extend our blessing over a young person, another person, someone that just needs to know God loves them and needs to know that we're in their corner. Pretty cool stuff. So next year at graduation, if you're there, I expect to see people like this, okay? The other story I heard, and it, it was reminiscent of something I remember when I first got here to Epworth. This was a small church in Tennessee. And they had dwindled in numbers. They only had maybe 15 people in the congregation on Sunday. And were, they were trying to figure out what they could be doing uh, to extend blessing and to uh, bring up their numbers a little bit, right? And they had a Sunday school class that met every Sunday. And it was called the Young Adult Sunday School Class. And the youngest person, or yeah, the, the youngest person in the class was 65. But they had been the young adult Sunday school class before and just never changed the name. So they were the, and I believe Epworth had a young adult Sunday school class for some, young adult small group for a long time, right? That wasn't so young adult anymore. Should have been young at heart, correct? Which is still really awesome. But this was the young, young at heart group or young adult group. 
And two of the gentlemen in there, Bob and Jack, they were widowers. And after their wives passed, they drew on each other for, for support, for care, for prayer, for love. And they would sit together and worship and come together in class. And they were sitting in the Sunday school class and they were talking about what could we do? What could we do to share God's love in our community? What could we do to let people know that we're here and that God has something to offer through us? So Bob started putting index cards in his pocket. And he went out, and one day he went to McDonald's. And he was talking to the, the young man that was uh, taking care of his order at the counter. And he pulled out an index card, and he said, what's your name? And the young man said, my name is Robert. And so he wrote down, Robert, McDonald's. And Robert's like, what are you doing? <laughs> He's like, well, you know, um, I just started this thing where, you know, when I meet people, I'm going to write their name down and where I remember them from, and I'm going to take time to pray for you if that's okay. And Robert's like, hmm, okay. And so Robert continued to do that, and he went to a restaurant. The waitress, her name was Rachel, and he wrote Rachel's name down, and he went to different places, and he met young people, and he just wrote their name down, and he stuck the cards in his pocket. And the next Sunday at Sunday school, his friend Jack uh, heard about what Bob was doing and shared with the whole class, hey guys, check this out. Bob is going around and writing names of people down and praying over them. So everybody started taking index cards, putting them in their pocket or in their purse or whatever and just going around and collecting names. Pretty soon the whole community was starting to talk about these people, these strange folks with index cards writing names down, correct? But the interesting thing that took place with that is all of a sudden these young people started to seek them out and come up and say, do you have another card? Can my, my friend be, have their name put down on that card? Can, can you put their name down? And even better yet, they were coming and saying, I remember you put my name down on a card. Can I offer something to you that, would you mind praying for me over this? And they did. And they did. They didn't notice like a whole bunch of people showing up at church. But what they noticed is when they were out in the community, people knew that they were folks who loved them, that cared about them, that were willing to pray for them. The sad news is that Bob became ill and he passed away. And his friend Jack thought that it would be an honoring thing for Bob to go into the community and he sought out Robert. Robert wasn't working at McDonald's anymore. He was now at the car dealership down the street. He had gotten a new job and so Jack went to Robert and said, hey, I just wanted to let you know, do you remember Bob? He's like, oh yeah, I remember Bob. I just wanted you to know that Bob passed away and we're having a service for him this Saturday and we'd like you to be there. Robert knew of several other people that had their names on cards. All of a sudden, Saturday shows up, and the sanctuary was filled with people who Bob had their names on cards, as well as other people in the church. They were there to celebrate the life of Bob and to share what it meant to them to have Bob pray for them and other members of the church pray for them. And Robert talked to Jack a little bit and found out how Bob and Jack would sit together in church on Sunday. And he came up to Jack and he said, hey Jack, thank you for inviting me today. He said, I know that you and uh, Bob would sit together in church and I've never been much of a church goer, but I was wondering if you would mind if I came on Sundays and sat with you. And by the way, you can call me Bob. <laughs> Isn't that what we do as disciples? We don't keep it in this room. We take it out into the community. 
We take it into our families. We take it into our schools, our job places. We do simple things just to let people know that they matter. We do simple things like praying for others and letting them know that God loves them. Confirmants. That's what your journey is beginning as today, is as a disciple who will make other disciples. We ask God's blessing on you today, that whether it's through index cards or raising hands or other ways, that you find creative and loving ways to extend God's love and blessing to others. And congregation, I hope the stories are a reminder of ways that we can do this. We don't just come and sit in pews and listen to a good message and feel good about ourselves. We take this and we go out into the community and we do something with it. And all it takes is a simple creative act to make a difference in the life of someone else. You don't have to be cool. You don't have to be young. You don't have to look a certain way. All you have to do is love people. Most of the time, all it takes is showing up and showing that you care. And it makes a difference in someone else's life. Amen? Amen. Excellent.